Hello, everyone. We are back for day 26 of our 40 days to Easter. Day 26. Hey, go back and watch some of these so you can hear this visual and audio, audio trail of what's going on. Uh, we're, we're moving closer to crucifixion, but the closer we move, closer we move to crucifixion, the closer we move to resurrection. Hello? All right, so today's scripture is just one. is John chapter 13, verses 12 through 17. We're at day 26. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as, I've, as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So here's the meditation. Here's what we should think about. Jesus of Nazareth had obviously gathered quite a following. Uh, people were looking for him to do something great. Uh, lead an uprising, fight for a new kingdom, a new position, more power. But he rejected the popular idea of greatness in order to introduce God's idea of it. No one before or since has ever embodied this virtue better than Jesus did. And there is no time he more clearly modeled it than on the night before his crucifixion. The disciples got into a little scuffle after dinner about which one of them was the greatest. Apparently, the lesson Jesus had doled out to the Pharisees about six months before about sitting in the lowest position rather than elbowing their way to the top had been forgotten. Luke gives us a straightforward account of Jesus' verbal response to, these, to those disciples. For all those, this wrong now, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. But here, with the washing of the feet, we have his visual response. A parable about service performed by the greatest man who ever lived. When no servant was available to wash their feet, Jesus assumed the role. The master became the servant. The Most High got down on his knees. Jesus horrified his disciples by demonstrating to them the divine perspective, you see, which turned their entire social order upside down. And then he commanded them to do the same. In one stunning act, Jesus demonstrated that in the kingdom of God, service is not the path to greatness. Service is greatness. Service is not the path to greatness. Service is greatness. Amen. Hallelujah on that. Right? Jesus demonstrated that. He said, I'll wash the feet and you watch me. And then you've got to be willing to do this. Service is not the path to greatness. Service is greatness. Let us pray. Lord God, just as your beloved son came in the world to serve others and not to be served, I too want to be a servant. The more I grasp my true identity and the dignity of my position as your beloved child, the more free I become to serve others, even when they do not reciprocate. And the less I am in the bondage of being defined by the opinions and expectations others have of me. I want you, O oh God, to define me so I can be liberated. I want to know who I am in Christ, so I have nothing to prove. I invite your Holy Spirit to make it possible for me to live an other-centered lifestyle. Teach me how to develop a vision for what you are doing in the lives of others and give me the joy of helping them mature and reach their potential. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Look, I'm going to do that last piece again as a uh, as a pastor, and 
you know, it's this responsibility of helping others to be mature. I got to do this last part again. I want to know who I am in Christ. So I have Christ. So I have nothing to prove. I invite your Holy Spirit to make it possible for me to live an other centered lifestyle. Teach me how to develop a vision for what you are doing in the lives of others and give me the joy of helping them mature and reach their potential. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Hey, that's day 26. Now, remember, uh, we talked periodically about how to read these things. So I read it for you. But now that you've heard a reading of it, when you read it, right, read it out loud, read it with some conviction, read it over and over and over until it becomes part of you. It is so short that you can read it. Multi you can read the whole devotional multiple times per day. Just just let it stir up in you. You know what I mean? What's that old song? Stir up the gift. Stir up the... Okay, let me stop that. All right, folks, that's the day, the end of day 26. Let's go ahead and stop this recording.